students, uh, today we are going to cover uh, the session on addressing modes, right? So previously we had discussed the instructions, instruction uh, sequencing and all. The last part of the module 3 is uh, regarding the addressing modes. Okay, so first uh, we shall, before getting into the uh, definition of addressing modes and uh, uh, different types of addressing modes, so now we shall see by uh, generating the memory addresses, how we have to generate the memory addresses and what is the need for addressing modes, right. So how do we specify the address of a branch target, so that question needs to be addressed. Can we give the memory operand address directly in a single and instruction in the loop and use a register to hold the address of a memory location then increment by 4 on each pass through the loop. So all such questions can be addressed using the concept, uh, using the concept of addressing modes. So now we shall see into uh, the definition of the addressing mode and different types of addressing modes. So coming to the definition of the addressing modes, it, the addressing modes is going to specify the different ways in which the operand address, the location of an operand can be specified in an instruction. So basically it is a means of uh, getting the addresses or mentioning the addresses of an operand in an instruction. So, the instruction format we are having, the mode, um, uh, the op code followed by an address or an operand. I repeat, the addressing mode, it, uh, it is the different ways in which the location of an operand can be specified in an instruction. It is a means to determine the uh, address of an instruction uh, in a program. So next, moving ahead, so this is the table which shows the different types of addressing modes and followed by the syntax. So here we are having in the table the different forms of addressing modes, so just we shall go through and in turn again discuss each one in detail. So here we are having the register addressing mode, absolute addressing mode, indirect addressing mode, indexed addressing mode, base with index, base with index and offset, relative addressing mode, auto increment mode and auto decrement mode. Apart from this we are having the implied addressing mode also. So now we shall discuss uh, with an example, with a syntax and example for each of the addressing mode one by one. So before determining, before um, going to the different types, so first we shall understand what, what do you mean by the effective address. So it is the location where exactly our operand is said to be placed, right. So that is called as the EA or we call it as the effective address of the operand. So the processor always tries to fetch the operand using its effective address, okay. So the addressing modes that follow the instruction do not give the operand or its address explicitly. Instead, it provides the information from which the effective address can be determined by the processor. Okay, so the addressing mode tells the, um, gives the addresses where actually the uh, operand can be found. So that is uh, that uh, address, new address, which appears as a part of the instruction from where actually we can determine the operand. So that we call it as an effective address. Okay, effective address is then used to access the operand by the processor for operand. Uh, exe for executing the instructions, right. So next we are going to start, start with the different types of addressing modes. The, as I told, so this uh, first one is the implied addressing mode. So implied addressing mode, so previously we have seen a, a zero address instruction formats and one address instruction formats. So this example push where uh, um, here it is an example of implied addressing mode. So the operands are specified implicitly in the definition of the instruction. So here the operand is not appearing as a part of the instruction. So it is by default understood implicitly it is said to be uh, present when we specify the instruction. 
Okay, so that we call it as an implied at the same mode. For example, here the op code is being present and there is no specification of the operand. So the op code itself will determine the operand. Example, we are having CLA, clear the um, accumulator. Okay, so we have seen uh, clear the accumulator. Uh, here the, oper uh, the operand is not being mentioned. By default, it is taken as the uh, accumulator is taken as the operand. Okay, so operand in accumulator is implied in the instruction. So next we are having uh, the another example for the implied addressing mode. See operand is implied on top of the stack. So this is the uh, uh, push. Okay, whatever the content we are going to push. So we are not going to determine when we specify push. It is understood the top of we are referring to the top of the stack. Okay, so this is called as the implied addressing modes. Operands are specified implicitly uh, in the definition of the instruction. So next we are going to uh, moving forward immediate addressing mode. So here operand is uh, the value. Okay, operand value is is being given as a part of the instruction. So operand is given explicitly in the program. So here the value of the operand directly it is going to be uh, appearing as a part of the instruction. How do you identify the immediate addressing mode? So always in an instruction you are going to find this hash symbol. So this represents the immediate addressing mode. So this is what the op code and the operand. So instruction contains the hash preceded by a integer value. Okay. Uh, pre uh, here we are having some constant value. Okay. So he here in this instruction move hash phi comma r1. So the value integer value phi is being moved into the register r1. Okay. So next we are having a register mode. So what happens in the register mode? The two operands are the registers. Uh, here the operand is the content of the processor register. The name of the register appears in the uh, instruction. Okay. So here what happens? One of the operand is both the operands are the register. The contents of the registers R1 and R0 will be added. Okay. And the resultant uh, will be stored in R1. So here what happens? So both the operands are the contents of the register R0 and R1. So therefore this form of addressing is called as the register addressing mode, register mode. So here we are having both the operands as the registers. Next form of addressing we are having the absolute. It is also referred as the direct addressing mode. So the operand is in the memory location, address of the location, address of the uh, memory location will be specified directly in the instruction. So now you can see uh, the operand is in the uh, memory location, address of this location is given explicitly in the instruction. For example here, um, SUM is the memory location, it is the name of the memory location, SUM. We are trying to move the contents from the register R0. Okay, register R0 contains the resultant of uh, uh, some operation, uh, example 100. So this value will be moved into the memory location, right? So here, uh, because the sum, it is the name of the memory location, symbolically represented as SUM. Okay, so this the memory location uh, operand will appear as a po um, part of the instruction. So this is called as the direct addressing mode. Uh, I repeat, the operand is in the memory location. Address of that memory location is being mentioned in the instruction. So next, here we are having another form of uh, addressing mode is the indirect addressing mode. See what happens in the indirect addressing mode. Directly um, here the uh, instruction does not give the operand or its address explicitly. Okay, so here we are going to make use of a, a pointer. 
is indirect mode. So the effective address of the operand is the contents of the register or memory location. How do you identify the indirect addressing? So indirect addressing, in the addressing you are going to uh, identify the small brackets. Okay, so here we can uh, see two cases here. The um, address or uh, the register that contains the address of a memory operand is called as a pointer. Okay, so indirection is being denoted by the name of a register uh, or new address can be found in the instruction. Okay, so what actually do we mean this can be explained and understood by this figure. See, in the first case what happens, we are going to this R1 is a pointer register. What do we mean by pointer? You can see now the address, the address of the operand will not appear directly in the instruction. So instead uh, the actual address, it will just give you the R1 is now holding the memory location B. In turn B is pointing to a location where the actual operand is being present. So because of this it is called as a indirect, it is called as a, see here, now R1 is holding B which is the address of actual operand where the actual operand is being present. So now this where the operand, the address of the operand is being stored up in a register. So that is the meaning what we have seen in the previous slide. So the register that contains the address of an operand is called the pointer. So now in this particular case R1 is a pointer, R1 is a pointer. So you can identify the second case here. So what happens in the second case? So here we are going to use the register R1 to hold the address of the actual operand. But in the second uh, diagram here, in the figure B, you can see it is through a memory location. So B, uh, see this particular A, A contains B. In turn B contains the address of actual operand where it is being stored. Right? So this we can identify in an instruction whenever instruction contains uh, uh, this small brackets. Uh, we uh, treat it as uh, indirect addressing mode where the pointers have been used to find out the actual address of the operand. So next uh, indirect address, uh, addressing example. Now we shall consider one small example and look uh, into how uh, uh, we can compute uh, the write a program using the indirect addressing mode. Okay, so previously we have considered the same memory map and the program example for adding of n numbers using a loop, right? So here what happens, you are having a n numbers uh, to be added, okay? There are n numbers, number 1, number 2 to number n. So all these numbers have to be added. So the total number of elements or numbers present it is indicated and stored by the small n which is to, uh, represent which is stored in a memory location called as the capital N. Right? And the resultant of all these operation uh, of the n number of elements will be stored up in the sum in the memory location uh, addressed or represented by sum. Right? So this is the data part and this is the instruction uh, which have been stored in the memory map. Okay. So now we have to just uh, rewrite the program using this particular addressing, uh, indirect addressing mode. So here the clear uh, shows now, the picture uh, shows here uh, how the uh, problem can be modified using the indirect addressing mode. Right? So first we are going to move the N into R1. Okay, what does N re, uh, reflect? It is going to hold the total number of elements to be added. So therefore you are making use of R1 as a counter. Counter to keep track of number of elements to be added. Right? So R1 is our counter. 
So what is this hash num1, comma r2? So this you can identify it as an immediate addressing mode. What is the meaning of hash num1, comma r2? That is r2 will be loaded with the address of the first number. Okay. So what is this address here? So this is num1. It is the symbolic name. If I want to uh, refer to the address, okay, as we have seen, each memory location is being represented either by a symbolic name or by an address, right? If we want to refer to this address, so then we have to prefix the hash in front of the symbolic name. So that it is called as the address of the first number. So that will be loaded into our register R2. Okay. So then we add. It is initialized and we are going to clear and set it to 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. So that is our adder. Just like an adder. Okay. So now R1 is a counter. R2 we are loading with address of the first number in the given list of data and clear the R2. Now, what we are going to do here, R2 is used as an indirect pointer. It is used as a pointer. Okay, so R2, R2, so now R2, comma R0. Okay, add R2. Okay, indirection is present here, comma R0. So what actually happens here? You know that R2, it is pointing to the first number to the address of the first memory location where num1 is present. So, if you write this way, okay, so now we are referring to the number 1 plus uh, we are adding it to the contents of R0. What is there in R0? Nothing but 0. Okay, so therefore R0 is equal to num1 plus R0. So, then what we are going to do, we are going to add hash 4 comma R2 to point to the next number. If you are going to observe here, if it is byte addressable, the next address will be there at a memory location 1004. Okay, if we are going to assume it as a 32-bit address and the addressing of the locations, if we assume this as 1000, next location will be 1004. So therefore, we are going to add R2, uh, uh, we are going to add the value 4 to the contents of register R2. So what is R2 containing? It is previously it was pointing to num1. So when we add 2, it is made to point to the next number. Okay, so in the array, first number 1 then it will be add to, so then the R2 will be made to hold the next number. Okay, so when we have done this, we have to decrement the count. Because R1 is a counter, we have to decrement the count value by 1. That is R, R1 is equal to R1 minus 1. So then we have to loop, okay, branch greater than 0, it is a conditional uh, uh, statement. So, where the execution, depending upon the condition, it helps us to go back to the loop, uh, go back to this particular statement, okay. So, each time, what does this branch condition try to do? It will check whether our R1, okay, always a branch condition statement, it will try to examine the contents of the counter R1. So, it will check if our R1, if it is greater than 0, okay, or not not. If, if it is greater than 0, because um, here in this example, if you have taken 5 numbers, okay, so we go to the, look, as yes, we go to the, we go back here, okay, go back here and again continue with the operation. So, we go back, go to the loop. So, in the next slide, you can check here. So, uh, this uh, along with the data we have written here. So, move n comma r1. So, our n value is equal to 5. So, move hash num1 comma r2. So, what is this hash num1 comma r2? As I told you, this is the address of the first element. First integer where you are storing the data. Hexa value, your, the address information, you are trying to store it into the register r2. 
So then you are clearing R0. So add R2, comma R0, R0. So, uh, okay, add R2. What do you mean by R2? So R2 is holding this one. Uh, the value, we want the actual value at this location. So the value at that location is 10 plus 0, 0. What is this 0, 0? It is nothing but R0 value. You have taken as it is being cleared and that is written here. So 10 plus 0, it is equal to 10, right? So now R2, we are done with the first number. So then we are done with the first number, okay. Num1 is com completed. So therefore, our next we have to make this particular R2, R2 to point to the next number, okay. So that is the reason we add hash 4 comma R2. Because it is a byte addressable, the address locations are going to start from 1000, 1004. So each byte, 4 byte, so therefore we have to add the value 4. So then decrement R, decrement R1, R1 will be decremented by a value 1. 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. So branch greater than 0 loop. So we are going to check if R1 is greater than 0. Here R1 is not greater than 0. Here it is 4. So 4 is not greater than. So go back to the loop once in a bit. Right. Okay, so this again is a, uh, that example is said to be continued for the second iteration as you can see here. Okay, so now uh, this 20 plus 10 is equal to 30. So we are going to add this particular number. Okay, R0 is equal to 20 plus 10. So what, what was, where is this 20? 20 is nothing but the number present at the second location. So num 1, 2. So this is 10, 20. Number 2 is 20. Next you can imagine as 30 like that. So 10 was the previous value. 10 plus, okay, so here 10, uh, 0 was updated to 10. So this 10 plus 20, 20 is the second number. It has been added to form it as 30. Again, you are going to add 4. From 1000, it was 1000, 1000, 1004, 1008. So in this manner, the addresses will be continued. Okay. So now the counter value R1 uh, is equal. R1 is decremented again from 5 to 4, 4 to 3. And check each time we are going to check if, if is the uh, R1 value greater than 0. So where we are checking in this particular branch condition. Branch greater than 0 loop. We are trying to check out what is the value of the counter R1. So finally uh, in the next final uh, when it is going to continue until this particular condition R1 is... Uh, R1 is equal to 2. So this will be the loop execution of the program. So where R0 is equal to 30 plus 30 is equal to 60. Alright. And again for every time you will be adding 4. Okay. So these are the hexa values what you can go on. Um, it is represented in the hexa decimal values. So then again decrement R1. So again every time it iterates through the loop and finally... Uh, in this particular, this is the uh, final iteration. When once R1 is reached to 0, what happens here? The sum will be equal to 150. The condition fails here. Okay, so R1, if it is greater than 0, R1 is equal to 0. Okay, so therefore, the resultant sum, where it is there? It is there in the R0. Your R0 you have taken previously as the adder. So therefore, you are going to move that resultant, uh, which is there in R0 into the memory location, SUEM. So there the result will be stored, right? So this is the use, or uh, this is the example uh, to illustrate indirect addressing, right? Okay.
Okay, so the next addressing mode is the indexed addressing mode. Okay, so the uh, in the indexed addressing mode, we are having the effective address of the operand is being found out uh, using what we call an index register. Okay, so the general syntax for this particular index register. The general syntax for the um, index, so effective address of the operand is generated by adding a constant value to the contents of the register. Okay, so the syntax for the uh, index addressing mode is being represented as x of ri, where the effective address of the operand can be found out by adding the contents of uh, the x with the contents of R i okay so where x is a sign number x can is it is said to be the offset or the displacement we call the x as a offset or a displacement so this R i it is the name of an index register which contains the address of a new location where the operand can be formed so together how do we determine the address of the operand the contents of x has to be added the content uh, that is the x value has to be added to the register ri to get the effective address of the operand okay so in this particular case the figure uh, here the offset is given as a constant the offset is in the index register so now we shall understand both the cases so here this is the memory map we are having r1 it is holding the address okay so what here the instruction is add 20 of r1 comma r2 so how do we identify a index addressing mode so index addressing mode how do you identify in an instruction so one uh, either a register or a memory location preceded by a number so this indicates the um, index addressing mode so in this particular example you are having add 20 comma r1 comma r2 20 of r1 that is add 20 of r1 comma r2 so how do you now effective address so you have to find this particular operand value okay how do we determine this address of the operand which needs to be added to the contents of register r2 okay so now uh, uh, starting from a base address thousand, uh, 10000 we have to move 20 uh, locations ahead to find out the actual location of the operand so that is the meaning of in uh, indexed addressing mode so this particular 20 we call it as a offset or a displacement which has to be uh, which needs to be added to the base address so this is called as a base address from the base address when you add the offset value it will generate the actual operand address where the operand address can be found out now this particular what is the role of this register um, this is a uh, uh, r1 it is used as a pointer so it is containing r1 what does it contain now it contain uh, 10,000 uh, values so this is the address for this address we have to add 20 so then we find the actual address of the operand so this is the case where the offset is given as a constant so this is a constant which is the offset which appears in the instruction so now in the case uh, this particular uh, figure b what you can observe is that so this particular offset value offset value which is there here 20 so we are not that 20 it is put up in the register r1 so r1 it is now containing the displacement of the offset value so this what appears in the instruction the address the base address it is appearing in the instruction so so this add 10,000 okay 
of R1. Uh, this is H, 10,000 hex is hexadecimal address. So, of R1, comma R2. That means, whatever that uh, 10,000 has to be added with the contents of register R1. Okay, what does R1 contain? It contains the displacement value 20. So, that has to be added to the base address to generate the actual address of the operand. So, this is the uh, example of how the indexed addressing, uh, this is the example of indexed addressing mode. So, in the figure A, offset is given as a constant. In the figure B, offset is defined in the index register. Right. So, now again we shall consider one example, assembly language code, to, um, as an example to illustrate indexed addressing mode. Okay. So, what is the problem statement here? We are having a list of student marks. Um, here, it is being taken up as a concept of an array. So, where we are having a rows and a columns. So, here there are n number of students. So student 1, student 2, student 3. But in the figure, we are having number of students. Only student 1, student 2 details are displayed. Okay. So, each student we are required to store the... Um, uh, what is the information we have to store here? Total number of students, that is n. Number of students is being represented by the value n. So, student identity 1, id 1, student ID, id 1. So, here we have to write the student 1 id and student id 2, okay. And we are going to store the test marks scored in three subjects, test 1, test 2 and test 3. So, similarly, we are having the marks scored in test 1, uh, test 2, test 3 of uh, student 1 and student 2. Okay. So, now what is the problem uh, is that we have to add the test marks of all the students. Similarly, the test marks of all the test, the uh, test 2 marks has to be added for all the students and test 3 marks also needs to be added for all the students and then store it in a uh, memory location, right? Okay, so this is the problem. Um, so, test 1 marks have to be added, uh, test all, uh, test 1 marks have to be stored in someone, okay, uh, of all the students and similarly, test 2 marks of all students have to be stored in the memory location sum 2 and similarly, sum of all the test 3 marks needs to be stored in some 3 location. Okay. And clearly observe these are the addresses where the particular um, each location is being um, identified. Okay. So, n the memory this how do we refer to this value with an address capital N. So, student identity here starts with a list. So, this is the base address for this. Now, from here, if we want to move to the test 1 marks, to test two, from test 1, from student, if you want to move to test 2 marks, you have to consider this as a base address and add 8 to get the test, uh, test value 2. And similarly, to move uh, to test 3 marks, we have to add the value 12. Okay. So, similarly, if, if we want to move from the base address uh, to find, to access this uh, test 1 location. So, then we have to add 4 to the base address. So, that is the uh, reason why we have considered this example as a discussion for uh, index addressing more. Right. So, in the next uh, slide, we are going to see this memory map along with the problem um, uh, rewritten in terms of uh, index and the same mode, right. So, the same memory map is being considered where the, the information is being written. So, here N, capital N represents more, uh, the uh, total number of students. You are having the student identity uh, for the first student, test 1, test 2, test 3. So, all these fields represent the student one. So, from here, the student 2 record details are going to start. So, what you have to observe clearly is that, so this is going to start at a, a address list. 
and what is this particular thing, where does this particular address start, list plus 16, because it is a byte addressable, this is list plus 4, plus 8, plus 12, and the student uh, 2 will be starting at an address of uh, list plus 16, okay, so this is the important point what to be noted. So now coming to the, pro, uh, the assembly code for this, you are having what we call uh, the uh, move. Okay, first, what is the first step what we are trying to do? Move hash list comma or not. What we are trying to do here, the address of this location as I have told you. So this location is represented by a symbolic name and also it is represented by some address, right? Okay, so this address of this location, if I want to load R2 with the address, so then I have to prefix the hash in front of the symbolic name. So therefore now, you will be loading hash list comma R0. Hash list comma R0 is nothing but we are trying to move, we are trying to move the address of the first student, okay, into the R0. So, R0 now, it is trying to point to this particular location. R0 is now pointing to this location, right? Okay, R0 is pointing to this particular location, right? So, now three registers are used here. What is this three register? Why we are using the three registers here? R1 to hold the value of all test1 marks. R2 as an adder to hold all test2 marks and R3 to hold all test 3 marks, right? So this is the reason why we are using registers R1, R2 and R3. So initially we are trying to clear the uh, register contents, right? So next R4 is another register where we are trying to store the number count, how many student records we have to add. So total number, this n value, so R is at, R4 is acting like a counter to keep track of number of students okay so is the clear all these are the data that we have to uh, registers what we have to initialize so then what we are going to do we actually start the code so in this particular thing we are taking a branch whenever there is more than one record okay so we are going to take a because there are more than one student to be uh, test marks of more than one student to be added up so we are going to take a loop, okay. So here what we are going to do, first we from the base address called as list, we have to move to the next location, okay. Because why? We have initially made our R2, uh, R0, R0 to point to this location, okay. But we want to access test1 marks of student1. So therefore, we if we want our R0 to point to this location, what is this now from the base address? You have to add 4. So that is the reason we add 4 to the contents of register R0. So this is an example of uh, indexed addressing mode. 4 of R0. So that is what we have written. So therefore now contents of this. Okay, we are going to access this marks, test 1 marks will be added with R1. So R1 it is not but it is initially 0, 0 plus this test 1 of student 1 will be added. So similarly now we are using R0 only, this is the base address, we want to move to the second location, uh, test 2 marks. So therefore from the base, this is our base, from the base you have to move to the test 2, right? Okay, so therefore we will be adding add 8 of R0, R2. That means from the base you have to move to this location. So which is at an address of list plus 8. So that is the reason we add here add 8 of R0, R2. So similarly to access the test 3 marks of student 1 and add it into the register R3, we are going to add, uh, we are going to add 12 of R0, R3 because this is there at an address of list plus 13, uh, sorry, list plus 12. So that is the reason 12, uh, we are adding 12 to the contents of R0. What is there in R0? The base address, it contains the base address. For that base address, that means from here, 
if you add a 12 you will be uh, able to uh, that means the pointer will be moving to this particular position so that is the reason uh, here 12 of r not uh, is being considered 12 of r not index addressing mode right so the value at this the operand at this particular position is added uh, to the contents of register r3 so what is there in r3 0 0 plus test 3 marks of student 1 right so now here we had we have added test 1 marks of only 3 uh, first student data is present here right so next uh, uh, first student uh, this thing is over so we are required to update our r not to, to point to the second student details right so what is there see here where do you uh, where is the particular student to data is going to begin it begins at an address of 16 from the base address it is placed at an offset of 16 so that is the reason we add ha add hash 16 comma r not okay so when we add this our r not will be updated from uh, student 1 it will be made to point to r not okay so again from here the same loop repeats because this will be again at a display from this will be our new base address and from this this will be at a position 4 and again plus 8 plus 12 and so on so same loop we can continue for the student to also right okay so next decrement r4 we are going to decrement the uh, because we, when once the one uh, iteration one pass is over so we are required to decrement the counter which is our counter r4 is our counter which holds the number of students so we have to reduce the count by one okay so then we are going to uh, after decrementing the count branch greater than zero loop so what is this branch greater than loop will try to do it will check out whether our counter r4 value has it reached to zero if it is greater than zero so again we it will go back to the mentioned target branch target address so this is our branch target address identified by the name loop okay so now when once the condition is uh, this branch if it is greater than zero is false so for then it comes out of the loop and where do you think r1 r2 r3 what uh, what does r1 contain it contains the sum of all the test one marks of all the students so therefore this r1 value it is being copied into the sum one okay sum one initially i told you we have to store the uh, summation of all the test marks of all students of test one into sum one okay that is the reason we are moving r1 comma sum one similarly r2 is holding the summation of all test two marks of all students so therefore it will be moved from r2 or to sum two and similarly for r r3 move r3 comma sum 3 so clearly these steps illustrate the usage of what we call the indexed at the same mode right so there are variations with respect to the indexed addressing mode so what we call it as a uh, variations with the index addressing mode base with index mode okay so where another version of index mode uses two registers which can be denoted as r of i uh, comma rj here a second register may be used to contain the offset right so instead of using x the x is the offset or the displacement which needs to be added so here one of the register here two registers are used r i r j so one of the register can be used to hold the offset value so how do you determine the effective address of the operand effective address of the operand is equal to contents of this register r i whatever is the content of register r i plus whatever is the content of register r j okay either of r i or j any one register can be used to store the offset uh, offset value one can another one can be used to store the uh, base address right 
So effective address of the operand is equal to Ri, Rj. So this is called as base with index mode. So next, so this is the figure which illustrates that uh, mode. So here Ri contains an offset 2. Okay. So Rj, it is containing the base address. Okay. So this is our base address. For this, you are adding the value 2, Ri value 2 to go to the actual position okay so what is there that thousand hundred and two this is the actual value of the operand that needs to be fetched by the processor right so next another variation with the indexed offset is the base with index and offset mode another version of index mode uses two registers plus a, a, a constant value so you apart from ri rj x uh, there is a constant uh, uh, offset value which needs to be considered. So in this case, the effective address of the operand is, effective address is nothing but the x value needs to be added, the contents of ri as well as rj. Contents of 3 is being taken into account. Okay. So this is the example of uh, what we call the indexed addressing mode. Okay, so the next addressing mode is called as the relative addressing mode. Right, so we are having uh, the next addressing mode as the relative addressing mode. So this is another type of addressing mode. Uh, see, why, uh, why the name relative? So mainly it is another form of indexed, but here the main thing we are going to uh, consider is the program counter. Okay, so here the addresses will be determined, the operand value is determined depending upon the relative position, relative value of the uh, program counter. Okay, so that is the re reason we call it as a relative uh, mode. The effective address is determined by the indexed mode using the program counter in the place of general purpose register. What is the difference between the indexed mode and the uh, relative mode is that previously we have observed that x, whenever there is x, but it can be considered as a uh, indexed uh, mode. But the difference is that here uh, exclusively only program counter will be used in the relative mode and in the index mode any general purpose register and a memory location can be mentioned here, right? So that is the difference between the relative mode and the indexed addressing mode, okay? So here mainly program counter, we are going to add x to the value of program counter. Okay, so this relative mode, it is basically used in the conditional branch instructions to determine the branch target address, right? So, for example, branch greater than zero loop. So, this location value is computed by specifying it as an offset from the current value of the PC, okay? So, the branch target address is being determined depending upon the current value of the PC and the offset value by adding the offset value. So that is, this is called as the relative mode. Okay. So next, relative addressing. So here what happens, effective address diagram represents the effective, uh, how the effective address can be determined in the relative addressing mode. So EA is equal to PC plus relative address, X value has to be added. See here. X contains 100, which can be a positive or a negative number in a 2's complement. So, this program counter, it is holding 2. So, to this 2, we are going to add 100 to determine the actual position of the operand, right? So, exclusively, we are making use of the PC in the relative addressing mode, okay? So, apart from this, we have um, now uh, discussed uh, different forms of addressing modes like the implied addressing mode, direct addressing mode, uh, uh, absolute or direct addressing mode, indirect addressing mode, and immediate addressing mode, indexed addressing mode, and uh, lastly, we are having additional addressing modes which are called as the auto-increment and the auto-decrement mode. Okay. 
So this auto increment mode effective address of an operand is the contents of the register specified in the instruction. After accessing the operand, the contents of this uh, uh, the contents of this register are automatically incremented to point to the next item in the list. So implicitly, the increment amount is one. So what is this mode is uh, syntactically it is represented as R I plus. So here also we use a small braces to represent uh, small brackets to represent the inner. It is uh, uh, this is uh, following the plus symbol, it is present up here, right? So, where Ri is a pointer register, okay? So, this value, what is the, uh, I repeat, auto increment mode, effective address of the operand is the contents of register specified. For that, we will add 1. After accessing the operand, the contents of this register are automatically incremented by 1. The contents of this register uh, will be incremented by 1. As an example, now for example, you think now Ri is holding some value uh, 1000, right? Uh, when I write 1000 like this, so value at um, position 1000 will be accessed. Okay, so 1000 represents a memory location. Remember, it is not an operand value. It is a memory address, right? So, whatever the operand present at that address will be used. And then, this contents of Ri, Ri is now equal to 1000. After using the operand at that 1000 position, it will be incremented by 1. Okay, so therefore, the new value of Ri will be equal to uh, 1, right? Uh, it will be equal to 1000 plus 1. It is equal to 1001, right? So, this is called as the auto increment mode. So, similarly, we are having an auto decrement mode. So, here the contents of the register specified in the instruction are first decremented. It is a pre-decrement and then the effective address of the operand is said to be computed, okay? So, now for example, if the value, okay, how it is being represented syntactically minus of Ri, okay, minus, uh, minus, okay, of Ri, Ri is a register, it is a pointer register. So, Ri, for example, if it is holding some 1000, right, so this particular Ri, if it is 1000, first it is decremented by 1. If it is not byte addressable, if it is byte addressable, it is decremented by value 4, okay. So, then that location will be used. For example, if it is 3000 is the address, um, minus 4 will be the new address to, uh, this particular uh, will be the new address of the operand. The value at this particular address will be taken as the operand, right. So, this is the what we call the auto decrement mode. Auto increment and auto decrement are basically used for the operations of the stack. So, here is a clear example, some sample program which uh, illustrates the use of uh, what we call the auto increment and the auto uh, auto increment has been shown here. Okay, move same example of adding up of n numbers. Okay, so what you have to assume here is that the numbers are stored sequentially without uh, each memory location. Uh, here, uh, the you cannot uh, hear the address if it is beginning at 1000. Next location will be next number, num1, num2, okay, number 3. It is stored at an R. We have to assume that the addresses are in this particular form, 1000, 1001. 1002 and so on. So then we can apply this auto increment mode. So now what we are going to do, n is loaded with r1 move hash num1 comma r2. What is hash num1 comma r2? The address of first instruction is moved into r2. So clear register r now. So previously we were adding 4 of r2 uh, Come because it was byte addressable. Now to illustrate this auto increment uh, uh, mode, we have not considered this four, right? Okay. So just auto increment uh, R2 plus comma R0. So then decrement R1 branch greater than zero loop. So if the condition fails, then 
um, we are finally the we have uh, completed the addition of all the some n numbers and resultant is being moved from r naught into the sum right so this is an example of auto increment mode okay so now we shall uh, this is the frequently asked question in the exam so you can uh, um, know this one registers r1 and r2 of a computer contains the decimal values 2900 and 3300 so what is the effective address of the memory operand in each of the cases so here the effective address of the memory operand we are required to find out in each of the instructions given right so these are the instructions given i again repeat every instruction by looking at you should be able to identify the different forms of addressing modes uh, to summarize so you can identify the form of the addressing mode here so this uh, this is called as a indexed addressing mode this is a immediate addressing mode this is a indexed um, with the base and offset value so this is the auto increment and this is the auto decrement mode so now we shall uh, try to discuss the solution for each of the uh, question so first instruction was load r1 comma r2 so effective address you should be able to determine okay so this particular uh, this uh, slide gives you the solution for the problem so this is called as an index addressing mode effective address is equal to 55 plus r2 okay 55 because what is this 55 it is the offset value plus contents of r2 what is there in r2 to, uh, r2 3300 so that value needs to be added here right 3300 so this is the effective address of the operand similarly here in immediate addressing mode the effective address is directly available as a part of the instruction so this actually is a 95 r1 comma r2 comma r5 so here effective address for this part you have to determine so 95 plus r1 plus r2 this is equal to 95 plus contents of register r1 r2 this is the effective address of the operand so similarly r1 plus so this is effective address of the operand is the 2900 because here we are not go first we can location will be used and then we are going to uh, then we are going to increment the values so that uh, therefore there is no change whereas uh, pre auto uh, decrement first we are going to decrement and then use of the value so this is the 3300 minus 4 will be this is the new uh, effective address of the operand right okay we can uh, find more solutions for this in the next book okay so um, until now we have completed all uh, the module 3 is set to be completed we have discussed uh, all the uh, content uh, like uh, machine instructions and total entire addressing modes okay